first steps. The first thing to realize is that since any thought manifests, it necessarily follows that all thought does the same. Else, how should we know that the particular thought we were thinking would be the one that we would create? Mind must cast back all or none. Just as the creative power of the soil receives all seeds put into it and at once begins to work upon them, so mind must receive all thought and at once begin to operate upon it. Thus we find that all thought has some power in our lives and over our conditions. We are making our environments by the creative power of our thought. God has created us thus, and we cannot escape it. By conforming our lives and thought to a greater understanding of law, we shall be able to bring into our experience just what we wish, letting go of all that we do not want to experience, and taking in the things that we desire. Every person is surrounded by a thought atmosphere. This mental atmosphere is the direct result of thought, which in its turn becomes the direct reason for the cause of that which comes into our lives. Through this power, we are either attracting or repelling. Like attracts like, and we attract to us just what we are in mind. It is also true that we become attracted to something that is greater than our previous experience by first embodying the atmosphere of our desire. Every business, every place, every person, everything has a certain mental atmosphere of its own. This atmosphere decides what is to be drawn to it. For instance, you never saw a successful man who went around with an atmosphere of failure. Successful people think about success. A successful man is filled with that subtle something which permeates everything that he does with an atmosphere of confidence and strength. In the presence of some people, we feel as though nothing were too great to undertake. We are uplifted. We are inspired to do great things, to accomplish. We feel strong, steady, sure. What a power we feel in the presence of big souls, strong men, noble women. Did you ever stop to inquire why it is that such persons have this kind of effect over you? Will others seem to depress, to drag you down, and in their presence you feel as though life were a load to carry? One type is positive, the other negative. In every physical respect, they are just alike, but one has a mental and spiritual power which the other does not have, and without that power, the individual can hope to do but little. Which of these two do we like the better? With which do we want to associate? Certainly not with the one that depresses us. We have enough of that already. But what about the man who inspires us with our own worth? Ah, he is the man to whom we will turn every time. Before ever we reach him in our haste to be near even to hear his voice, do we not feel his strength coming to meet us? Do you think that this man who has such a wonderful power of attraction will ever want for friends? Will he ever have to look up a position? Already so many positions are open to him that he is weighing in his mind which one to take. He does not have to become a success. He already is a success. Thoughts of failure, limitation, or poverty are negative and must be counted out of our lives for all time. Somebody will say, but what of the poor? What are you going to do with them? Are they to be left without help? No, a thousand times no. The same power is in them that is in all men. They will always be poor until they awaken and realize what life is. All the charity on earth has never done away with poverty and never will. If it could have done so, it would have done so. It could not. Therefore, it has not. It will do a man a thousand times more good to show him how to succeed than it will be to tell him what he needs or give him charity. We need not listen to all the calamity howlers. Let them howl if it does them any good. God has given us a power and we must use it. We can do more towards saving the world by proving this law than all that charity has ever given it. Right here, 
In this manifold world today, there is more money and provision than the world can use. Not even a fraction of the wealth of the world is used. Inventors and discoverers are adding to this wealth every day. They are the real people. But in the midst of plenty, surrounded by all the gifts of heaven, man sits and begs for his daily bread. He should be taught to realize that he has brought these conditions upon himself, that instead of blaming God, man, or the devil for the circumstances by which he is surrounded, he should learn to seek the truth, to let the dead bury their dead. We should tell every man who will believe what his real nature is, show him how to overcome all limitations, give him courage, show him the way. If he will not believe, if he will not walk in the way, it is not our fault, and having done all we can, we must go our way. We may sympathize with people, but never with trouble, limitation, or misery. If people still insist upon hugging their troubles to themselves, all the charity in the world will not help them. Remember that God is that silent power behind all things, always ready to spring into expression when we have provided the proper channels, which are receptive and positive faith in the evidence of things not seen with the physical eye, but eternal in the heavens. All is mind, and we must provide a receptive avenue for it as it passes out through us into the outer expression of our affairs. If we allow the world's opinion to control our thinking, then that will be our demonstration. If, on the other hand, we rise superior to the world, we shall do a new thing. Remember that all people are making demonstrations. Only most of them are making the ones they do not desire, but the only ones they can make with their present powers of perception. How to attain strength. Let us see that we use the right attitude of mind in all that we do, filling ourselves with such courage and power of strength that all thought of weakness flees before us. If any thought of weakness should come, ask this question, is life weak? If life is not weak, and if God is not discouraged, then you are not, never were, and never will be. I should like to see the sickly discouraged thought that could withstand this attitude of mind. No, life is strong, and you are strong, with the strength of the infinite. Forget all else as you revel in this strength. You are strong, and can say, I am. You have been laboring under an illusion. Now you are disillusioned. Now you know, and knowing is using the law in a constructive way. I and my Father are one. This is strength for the weak, and life for all who believe. We can so fill ourselves with the drawing power of attraction that it will become irresistible. Nothing can hinder things from coming to the man who knows that he is dealing with the same power that creates all from itself, moves all within itself, and yet holds all things in their places. I am one with the infinite mind. Let this ring through you many times each day until you rise to that height that looking sees. In order to be sure that we are creating the right kind of a mental atmosphere and so attracting what we want, we must at first watch our thinking, lest we create that which we should not like to see manifest. In other words, we must think only what we wish to experience. All is mind and mind casts back at the thinker, that only which he thinks. Nothing ever happens by chance. Law governs all life, and all people come under that law. But the law, so far as we are concerned, we ourselves set in motion. And we do this through the power of our thought. Each person is living in a world of his own making, and he should speak only such words and think only such thoughts as he wishes to see manifested in his life. We must not hear, think, speak, read, or listen to limitation of any kind. There is no way under heaven whereby we can think two kinds of thoughts and get only one result. It is impossible, and the sooner we realize it, the sooner we shall arrive. This does not mean that we must be afraid to think lest we create the wrong image. 
but it does mean that the way most people think can produce nothing but failure. This is why so few succeed. The person who is to succeed will never let his mind dwell on past mistakes. He will forgive the past in his life and in the lives of other people. If he makes a mistake, he will at once forgive it. He will know that so long as he desires any good, there is nowhere in the universe anything that opposes him. God does not damn anyone or anything. Man damns everyone and everything. God does not make things by comparing his power with some other power. God knows that when he speaks, it is done. And if we partake of the divine nature, we must know the same thing in our lives that God knows in his. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. What we will attract. We will always attract to us in our lives and conditions according to our thought. Things are but outer manifestations of inner mental concepts. Thought is not only power, it is also the form of all things. The conditions that we attract will correspond exactly to our mental pictures. It is quite necessary then that the successful businessman should keep his mind on thoughts of happiness which produce cheerfulness instead of depression. He should radiate joy and should be filled with faith, hope, and expectancy. These cheerful, hopeful attitudes of mind are indispensable to the one who really wants to do things in life. Put every negative thought out of your mind once and for all. Declare your freedom. Know that no matter what others may say, think, or do, you are a success now, and nothing can hinder you from accom accomplishing your good. All the power of the universe is within you. Feel it, know it, and then act as though it were true. This mental attitude alone will draw people and things to you. Begin to blot out, one by one, all false beliefs, all idea that man is limited or poor or miserable. Use that wonderful power of choice that God has given to you. Refuse to think of failure or to doubt your own power. See only what you wish to experience and look at nothing else. No matter how many times the old thought returns, destroy it by knowing that it has no power over you. Look it squarely in the face and tell it to go. It does not belong to you. And you must know and stick to it that you are now free. Rise up in all the faith of one who knows what he is dealing with and declare that you are one with infinite mind. Know that you cannot get away from this one mind, that wherever you may go, there, right beside you, waiting to be used, is all the power there is in the whole universe. When you realize this, you will know that in union with this, the only power, you are more than all else. You are more than anything that can ever happen to you. More about the power of attraction. Always remember that spirit makes things out of itself. It manifests to the visible world by becoming the thing that it wills to become. In the world of the individual, the same process takes place. It is given to man to use creative power but with the using of this power comes the necessity of using it as it is made to be used. If God makes things out of his thought before they come into manifestation, then we must use the same method. You can attract only that which you must first mentally become and feel yourself to be in reality without any doubting. A steady stream of consciousness going out into creative mind will attract a steady manifestation of condition. A fluctuating stream of consciousness will attract the corresponding manifestation or condition in your life. We must be consistent in our attitude of mind, never wavering. James says, Ask in faith, nothing doubting, for he that doubteth is like a surge of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We are all immersed in an aura of our own thinking. 
This aura is the direct result of all that we have ever said, thought, or done. It decides what is to take place in our life. It attracts what is like itself and repels what is unlike itself. We are drawn towards those things that we mentally embody. Most of the inner processes of thought have been unconscious. But when we understand the law, all that we have to do is to embody consciously what we wish and think of that only, and then we shall be drawn silently toward it. We have this law in our hands to do with as we will. We can draw what we want only as we let go of the old order and take up the new. And this we must do to the exclusion of all else. This is no weak man's job, but an undertaking for a strong, self-reliant soul. And the end is worth the effort. The person who can keep his thoughts one-pointed is the one who will obtain the best results. But this does not imply the necessity of strain or anything of a strenuous nature. On the contrary, strain is just what we must avoid. What we know that there is but one power, we shall not struggle. We shall know, and in calmness, we shall see only what we know must be the truth. This means a persistent, firm determination to think what we want to think, regardless of all outer evidence to the contrary. We look not to the seen, but to the unseen. The king of Israel understood this. When looking upon the advancing host of the enemy, he said, We have no might against this great company, but our eyes are upon thee, upon the one power.